Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the North East Lincolnshire series, centred around Grimsby and Cleethorpes along the Humber Estuary. North East Lincolnshire has 21 civil parishes. Here's today's for you. Welcome back to North East Lincolnshire, everybody. You join me on a beautiful, bright, sunny morning with plenty of blue sky up there. I think today it's going to be a wham one, as we say here in Lincolnshire. Now, this one has got a lot of railway related features, so let's go and find them. This is Habra. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome back to the northern reaches of North East Lincolnshire as we take on Habra. This is a village that's a bit of an anomaly in terms of where it's located. It sits between South Killingholm in North Lincolnshire and Brocklesby in West Lindsay. The only other North East Lincolnshire parish it's connected to, via road at least, would be Immingham. The name Haber is found in old records as Hayburg. There was once a manor house here of which now only earthworks remain. It belonged to the de Salt Fletby family during the 13th and 14th centuries and later the Skipwith family. It was reputedly abandoned when the Skipwith line died out. Today the village has land owned by the Earl of Yarborough, not surprising given the Brocklesby estate is so close by. It has a strong connection to the railways, indeed it still retains a railway station which was built in 1848. Industrially, the village was associated with both milling and salt working, both of which have now disappeared. It's now a commuter village mainly for both Grimsby and Immingham, but the presence of the station here means people are able to reach much further away places too. Haybrook can boast two parks, a village hall, a bowls club, a small shop and a pub, but generally speaking it's quite residential. Oh, and it's also got a very interesting link to a popular dried food company as well. Come with me around another pretty little North East Lincolnshire village. We begin our walk on St Margaret's Crescent, named for Habra's Church, which we'll see later on. There's some nice looking trees along here. Towards its end, there's a little garden, which recently got a new feature, a bench commemorating our late Queen's Platinum Jubilee. That's right next to the War Memorial, which here takes the form of a silhouetted soldier. It's a peaceful area, this, in what is otherwise a busy little village. Here's a bus stop. This one's not marked on Google Maps, which tells me it's no longer in use. A bit of digging, though, yielded the number 450, which runs between Immingham and Barton. Just off Cravens Lane, up a dead end track, you'll find a park. This is named Little Park, and it has a bigger brother, the aptly named Big Park. That's for later. Cravens Lane has some pretty houses, including this big white one. A lot of the housing in this one is pretty modern, having grown with the railway line. Blimey, is that house white enough with the sun shining on it? It doesn't half shine. It really is a standout feature on this road, isn't it? Quite amazing. No railway features as of yet, but we will get to those. There aren't any in this next section either, though. We're going to head down Chapel Road now to find an old chapel. Chapel. 
Chapel Road is so named because, surprisingly, there's a chapel on it. Habra had two, one for Wesleyans and one for Primitives. Just before we come to one of those, though, we have a phone box, which here in Habra is a book exchange. It's good to see these again in the district. I thought they'd dried up. Here's the chapel. This was the Wesleyan version, which has now been converted into a private residence. It dates from 1869. Now, this next part of the video is mostly residential. Habra is an odd village in that, historically, it had two medieval cores. One was around the church, whilst the other was located around the site of Habra Station. It's pretty clear which one has grown since those days. It's quite incredible what the railways and industry did to places. Habra is not short of green space, by the way. As well as its parks, check out this lovely little garden on Laurels Close. Okay, now we've turned onto Western Road, and now the railway stuff starts to come into view. In the far distance over there, you might just be able to see a set of railway barriers, level crossing barriers. We're heading for those. At the village's southwestern corner is Habra Station, built by the Great Grimsby and Sheffield Junction Railway in 1848. Still very much in use, it sits between Ulsby Station to the north and Stallingborough Station to the south. It's managed by East Midlands Railway and is also served by Northern Trains and Trans Pennine Express services. Up until 1988, there was a signal box here, typical of the design usually used by the Great Central Railway. The crossing gates used to be manually operated too, but they were converted to automatic barriers in 2016. Now, once you get over the railway, there are two things of note. One is Habra Country Park. This has a fishery known as Trev's Ponds. A good spot for the keen angler, its two ponds are constantly kept well stocked. On the other side of the road is Habra Bowling Club, with its immaculately manicured green. Now, once you get past the Bowls Club here, the road just runs off towards Brocklesby and into West Lindsay. We're going to turn around at this point, head back over the crossing, where there's a few more railway-related features, including a pub. It's the Parish Notice Board next, sited on the wall at the Star Card Emporium. With Habra down, we've got just four left in North East Lincolnshire. This is the Station Inn. It was built in 1848 at the same time as the railway, and was originally called the Station Hotel. It has a single large room with an open fire and an adjoining pool room. Live bands perform here every Saturday, and it's also the venue for the monthly meeting of the Habra League of Gentlemen. Next door is Southerton Guns. Not your average village shop, this does indeed sell guns. From rifles to pistols, it's all here. They do sell milk and bread too, according to the sign outside. And now we walk along Station Road for a while, which is a disjointed mix of housing, lining just one side of the road. If you were to follow this to the north, it would take you past the church before linking to the A160 on the outskirts of South Killingholm. So we're almost back to the beginning. Nice little circular walk this here in Habra. Very easy to, to navigate. You're, you're never far away from where you began, quite frankly, because of, because of how small it is. Now, there are a couple of things which I still haven't covered. One of them is called Big Park. So we're going to take a drive up there in a moment. And the other is the church, which is in Habra, but it's quite a way out of the main village. We'll cover that last. Okay, so if you follow Chapel Lane all the way to the end, you get to Habra Big Park, which is where I am right now. It's a very bumpy road, full of potholes. Not the easiest of roads to traverse, but eventually you come to this. Here we go. You can see why it's Big Park, can't you? Certainly got a, a decent size to it. There's a little football pitch just there. There's some tennis courts away to my right, as you can see over there. And there is some kind of community building with all of this, but it looks like it's been um well abandoned because it doesn't look like it's been used for a few years it's definitely boarded up so that's not in use anymore i imagine it was some kind of 
cricket pavilion or something if there was a cricket team that played here but I don't think there is quite frankly because it seems more like to, more likely football and other sports as opposed to cricket whatever it is it's not in use anymore so uh, you know it's the kind of building I, I, I'd like to see done up at some point and sort of brought back to life you know what I mean but uh, all about money I suppose so there we go that's uh, Habra Big Park so now I'm going to make my way back down the track which I've just come down avoiding all the potholes again if I can and lastly we'll go to the church The building we know today as St Margaret's Church replaced a much older building in the mid-19th century. The old church literally has just two photographs and a sketch which do the rounds on the internet. The current church building has a tower with an octagonal bell stage and a small spire. Now, whilst the church is interesting in itself, the churchyard is equally. Among the many who lay within it are several members of the Bachelor family. You'll all know that name thanks to what the family would make. Stick around for a special section on them in a few moments. Not far from the church is the boarded up and forlorn looking Habra Hotel. Once an elegant and well-maintained business, it once had an extremely loyal following and was widely regarded as one of North East Lincolnshire's premier wedding venues. It's currently up for sale for £700,000. If when you heard the bachelor name you instantly thought of this, you were totally right to do so. Habra was the birthplace of William Batchelor, the man who would found dried food company Batchelors. He was born in 1860, the son of a local farm worker. His greatest achievement was to discover a way to can vegetables, such as peas. It was this discovery that led to the formation of the company in Sheffield in 1895. After his death in 1913, his daughter Ella Gasking took over leadership of the company and developed it to include processed peas, with Bachelors eventually becoming a household name. Under her guidance, the company opened a factory at Wadsley Bridge in Sheffield in 1937. It was the largest canning plant in Britain at that time, covering a massive 12 acres. In 1949, their first dried soup, chicken noodle flavour no less, was sold, and in 1972 the famous copper soup was launched, and it's still just as popular today. Before we leave Habra behind, we've got the small matter of the village hall. This is right next to the church, located up a dead end lane. I couldn't pin down with any real certainty what this used to be. My initial suspicion, given the architecture, was a former village school. Habra once had a board school, but it's not this. That's on the Immingham Road, and it was built of red brick in 1876. Here's a picture of what that looks like. Back into the village via a bridge over the A180 now, which crosses the parish from west to east by the way, keep your eyes to the right, you'll see a white building. That would be the Old Chapel Hotel. It's the former Primitive Methodist Chapel, which according to its date stone, was built in 1836. It was rebuilt in 1873. And with that, we're finished with Habra. 
time to drive over the railway line and out of the village towards Brocklesby. What a lovely little place. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.